welcome to Friday's Reflections. I hope you've had a good week. Uh, I was away last week. Sarah and I went away for uh, three nights to, to Bempton Cliffs. It's, um, it's a place we've been going to for years. We missed a couple of years during COVID. Uh, but we go because, well, it's a couple of reasons, really. It's it's got the most amazing scenery. It's a it's a headland, and um, that there are lots and lots of seabirds that nest there. Real colonies of gannets, big colonies of gannets and kittiwakes and guillemots. There are puffins, um, which are wonderful. Um, and there's it's just the sheer numbers on the cliff. It's an incredible thing to witness. Um, there are all the wildflowers you could imagine and uh, and all the songbirds as well, um, linnets and white throats and um, chaffinches and skylarks and song thrushes and yellow hammers and um, it's just it's just incredible. You don't know where to look. There are just so many beautiful things. There are orchids and um, and no end of wonderful things. And it's a very easy place to be built up and to be restored and refreshed and prepare yourself for the next chapter of life. And um, it, it's very easy to to um, to find God in that place and be close to God in a sense, although he's everywhere. I think in some places it's easier to experience that than others. And that's one place where I, I love just being alone with with him and we 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 planned three nights in this um in this pod uh and it was glamping never been glamping before we've got a tent that we've used but we've never actually been glamping and the pod was was beautiful it was really really well kitted out it had a great power shower and uh and the, 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 there was one one double bed and one beautiful l-shaped sofa that turned into another another bed that was so comfortable. Everything was really good quality. The pillows, the little kitchen area with an enamel sink and a, a two hob ceramic top to cook and a microwave and kettle, all kinds. It was really, really well, well equipped. It is small, but, but perfectly adequate on this lovely little, little vineyard. There were eight pods and they weren't all occupied while we were there. So it was beautifully quiet in the evenings and um, and we just spent the time, Sarah spent the time taking photographs and, and I love walking. So we'd go to the reserve and spend time together. Then I'd go off for a walk and, and then we'd meet up again later and spend more time on the reserve and in different places and then come back and have a meal in the evening. And I cooked a couple of times. And then there was uh, the last evening we found this amazing fish and chip shop, which had won the best newcomer national fish and chip award and it was the most incredible fish and chips so so good the potatoes were from lincolnshire a specific type of potato and it was best fish and chips i've ever had so so a, a brilliant time and it was with that in mind that i um I, I want to share this scripture and i've never thought about this scripture in this way before it's about it's it's from the gospel of mark and it, it it's it's um, it's chapter six and it's verse 31. I'm only going to read one verse and then I'll tell you why, why, why it's on my mind. And this is talking about Jesus. The, the apostles had gathered around him. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And that really made me think that even in those days when life was at such a different pace to what it is today, Jesus himself took himself away to be with his father, went up mountains and to other deserted places. So he had that time. But he also told his disciples that they needed to do it too. And it was really important for them. And if it was important for him and important for them, then it's really important for us too. And for me, um, Bempton Cliffs and Flamborough Headland is, is, Headland is a place where I really can just completely take myself away from uh, all the things that are going on in life and really um, be in God's presence and just allow myself to be 
to be built up and to be refreshed and to really appreciate the incredible creation that 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 uh, that God spoke into being and uh, there were there, I did two walks while I was there the headlands around about 12 miles a little bit more maybe don't think so maybe and I, so anyway the walks I did were probably about 12 miles in total so I split them into two days and one day I did um from the, the RSPB reserve uh, at Bempton Cliffs to the lighthouse at Flamborough and then the second day I did Suvi, which is on the edge of Bridlington to the lighthouse so that that kind of completed and it was really lovely because the, the headland they had two very distinct walks the first one from Bempton to the lighthouse was uh, nothing but seabirds. Uh, and when you look down on them, it's really funny because they're very noisy, but you don't hear the noise until you actually get to the to the cliff edge, really. And then this, this noise and this smell of all these seabirds nesting hits you. And it's incredible. And I, I kind of liken it to a favela, a sort of slum, because they're all on top of each other. There's so many on the ledges. And some of them, like the kittiwakes, have nests. And then the guillemots and the razorbills are just standing there. And the egg, if you, you, you some had eggs, some had chicks, the egg just doesn't roll. It's on this little tiny ledge. And then in some instances, the chicks are there too, and the puffins. They're, um, on islands, they'll nest in, in holes in the ground, but on mainland, they'll nest in, in holes in the cave so they can get away from, from the creatures that would get them and, uh, get them and, and, and eat them. So, um, so there's all this incredible noise. And as, as the, the gannets were nesting, so they had chicks. So you'd get at eye level, you'd get what I would call squadrons of gannets flying in and the, the, the brilliance of their whiteness and the detail of the colour of their eye and the, the line around it and the kind of yellowish streak on their face. They were just amazing. And then the huddles of, of kitty wakes, um, not kitty wakes, guillemots and razor bills, they all huddle together on the ledges. And then you've got all these little messy nests with the kitty wakes. Some of them had twins, some of them had three, some of them just had one, some of them, some of them had an egg and a chick and all kinds of combinations and it's just a, a overload on your senses it's fantastic it's so alive it's just so alive and then you hear the alarm calls when a peregrine falcon comes or a crow comes or the jackdaws try to get an egg or any of the other herring girls come and it, it's just incredible and you've got this vast expanse of sea and because the weather was so glorious it was so blue um, in places it was turquoise and it was fantastic and then they had all the beautiful wild flowers and on the first half of the walk they were all the usual ones you'd see at this time of year campion and um, birds foot trefoil and uh, and some orchids there was a northern marsh orchid and then there were the um, and, and the, the reserve the actual reserve itself near the entrance there was a, a, a bee orchid which I've never seen before and it was absolutely exquisite and, and a family of stoats passed under, passed, passed across the little path I was walking on. Like, they were so near. They really were so near. It was amazing. And there were hares and there were grey partridges. And I didn't know where to look. I was lost in wonder. Um, and then the, the other walk the, the next day was very different. It, on that side of the headland, it wasn't, although you're still on the cliffs, there weren't the sea the seabirds, but there were house martins, house martins at eye level and some swifts and swallows all flying around your head. And then there were yellow hammers and linnets and, um, and stock doves and all wildflower meadows. And there were these pyramidal orchids, which are, are quite rare. They were beautiful. And it was just on, on those walks and in that area, which is so peaceful, despite all the busyness of the, of the birds, that I thought about Jesus taking himself off and then telling the apostles to take themselves off and how important it is to do that. And so my message to you is, do you have a place that you can take yourself off to, to practice solitude or to, you know, to just be alone with God, and not have the influences of, of, of life around you and just have that time to be refreshed and built up? It might be that you go away. It might be that if you can't get away, you, you have places here. I have Tewinbury Hyde. The Hyde at Tewinbury is one place that I would go to um, 
if I, if I, if I haven't got much time, but I have, can have an hour or so to myself. Pansanga Park, another place. But you, you may have places. If you haven't got a place and you'd like to go away somewhere, go to Bampton Cliffs at this time of year and you will not be disappointed. It's just amazing. That's really what I want to share with you. It's, it's, it's a lovely thought, isn't it? I've always thought about Jesus going to the deserted places and I thought about how he prayed to his father. I haven't thought about what the setting might have been like for him. And I thought about that at Bempton. What, what did he see? What, what, what of creation did he experience? And when the apostles would have been, gone away, what did they see? So I'm going to finish in prayer now. And do, do please join in with a loud amen when I finish. Um, Lord God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much that Jesus himself needed time time to be away from the crowds, away from the, his ministry, time to, to be close to you, to listen to, your, to, to listen to your voice and to be in a wild and beautiful place. And thank you that he also taught his apostles they needed to do that too. And surely, Lord, if they did, so, so do we today. So I just ask, Lord, that you would show us the places that will, will serve as places where we can go and and. Uh, and find you alone and be built up and restored and ready for the next leg of our journey with you. And uh, um, and thank you, Lord, for the amazing array of places there are on offer to us today and the way we can travel. So, Lord, just show each one of us where you would have us um, spend our time when you call us to come away with you and be revived and refreshed. And we offer up our prayers, not in any strength of our own, but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, name above all names. I hope you have a great weekend. We're going to see Gwynny tomorrow evening. We're looking forward to dinner and catching up with her and seeing how, how life is for her in Bedford. So whatever you're doing, have a great time. And if you're going to church on Sunday, um, really look forward to seeing you there. If you haven't been to church and you live on Pansinger, please do come and join us at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're in Hardings, just off Moore's Walk. Uh, if you're not in Pansang, somewhere further afield, then go, go to your local church and, and just see what God has to say to you. I look forward to sharing with you again next week. See you then. Mm-hmm.